Okay, moving on to my next question now, Bego. Now, we come into this world uninvited and we, we go from this world without a prime artist as ever. Well. But as soon as we are, you know, we are born to this world, we are being put into this, let's say, a glass of house, you know, uh, you know, which is covered with our parents, teachers, priests, and then politicians and so on and so, so forth. So we are being, you know, taught to look at certain things through their eyes. I mean, I could be wrong, this is my right. interpretation. So, are we a, a one, can, can one person get out of this house, okay, uh, and look at life or the outside world in his own way? Are we given that freedom? I believe we are not, right? But, but we grow up in that world, we grow up in that world, and you know, there comes a time, you know, where you need to break that mold. So then the, then the problems start coming into your life, you know, you know, people will consider you as a piece of like that. So, but they believe that, you know, growing up, studying, you know, finding a job, getting married, kids, houses, and dying again. So is that all there is to life? Well, it's a very important question. Mm. It's a really important question. Mm. <laughs> Uh, the direct answer mm. sometimes you can uh, break free of certain things mm. but you cannot break free of all things now I'll explain in detail but having said that first thing is you need to have this uh, sort of you need to be different mm. your thinking has to be slightly different mm. if you are a very uh, if you con con conform mm. easily then you are not going to question anything mm. you know there's uh, numerous uh, behavioral uh, uh, be, you know, behavioral psychologists they do this uh, experiment where there's a set of monkeys mm -hmm. and uh, when you try to climb the ladder and uh, pick a banana mm -hmm. you are showered with cold water okay. and then these monkeys uh, become afraid of uh, climbing mm -hmm. and after some time you replace one monkey and put a new monkey mm -hmm. and uh, when that new monkey doesn't know when things mm -hmm. keep climbing uh, the others say don't climb mm -hmm. and uh, there's no shower anymore mm -hmm. but uh, he doesn't climb mm -hmm. so even if you replace all the monkeys mm -hmm. The new monkeys who have never experienced a shower mm -hmm. and they see banana, they will be afraid. Yeah. So, assume that there is a new monkey mm -hmm. who is brave enough to venture out. Mm -hmm. Right? That's a very important human quality. Like uh, we know that uh, Ferdinand, Magellan, Columbus, yeah. back in the day, Ptolemy, they ventured out. Mm -hmm. Elon Musk is venturing out to Mars. Yeah. They will go to Pluto. Mm -hmm. So there's this quality of human nature to venture out also. Mm -hmm. So time to time, there are people who would venture out of the normal rat race of life, mm -hmm. and then they would uh, start seeking for different answers. Mm -hmm. In order to venture out, you need to have a lot of courage, determination, and acceptance to adversity. Mm -hmm. Because like you said, a lot of people are going to say that you are just a lunatic, mm -hmm. right? And uh, so breaking that barrier, you need to really be ready to lose yourself, mm -hmm. lose your dignity, yeah. lose your uh, praise. Mm -hmm. That would happen, right? It's very, very important question. And if you are brave enough to challenge all that, you would venture out and you would start seeing a different reality. Mm -hmm. So from one relative reality, you would uh, see a different relative reality. Mm -hmm. And uh, what is more important is not trying to accept this new reality. The more important thing is that you lose faith on both realities. Mm -hmm. Right? So usually what people would do is move from one reality and they start believing in a new mm -hmm. reality. The idea of Buddhism is not the uh, way that you start, uh, you, are, you stop your attachment or you start being detached from both these realities because you know both of them are relative realities. But having said that, we innately have the limitation with our sensory experience. Uh, I, ear, nose, tongue, yeah. mind, we have an innate uh, sensory uh, uh, issue. Now, uh, the easiest way to explain that is uh, Plato's idea of allegory of caves. Mm. I, I'll put it in, uh, very simply. So there's a cave, right? There's a cave and there's a cave entrance and there's a wall uh, on the opposite end and uh, there's a short wall here and certain, uh, some prisoners are chained facing the wall not the entrance. So they cannot see the entrance, they only see the wall. It's a thought experiment. So assume that they have been uh, chained for their entire lives. If someone uh, passes in front of the cave opening, mm. they, the, the shadow would, would be casted on the uh, wall oh. of the cave and the prisoners would see that uh, shadow. Mm. And they would, uh, suppose that there was a, a, a horse mm. which passed the cave entrance, 
the shadow of the horse would uh, cast on the cave uh, uh, wall, and the prisoners would think this is a horse mm. because they never can see the true reality yeah. outside. And uh, in their world, they would call this shadow mm. the reality. Yeah. And as soon one prisoner could break out and then uh, see the real horse, and then he comes and tells the other prisoners, "This is not a horse. The real horse is something else." He would be called the same thing yeah. that you are a lunatic, mm. right? The analogy, this anecdote can be taken in many different ways. Our eye is like a mirror because uh, what we see is a mirror of a reality, right? Now, why I say that? Suppose uh, take your eye as a mirror. Uh, when we have these uh, mirrors, when you look from certain types of mirrors, the the reflection uh, you you see it small, small, and certain mirrors entirely. Mm-hmm. And if the mirror is tinted with a red uh, tint, yeah. you will see a red image. Mm-hmm. So depending on your mirror, you will see different images. Yeah. In Buddhism, the word given for this is prasada rupa, mm-hmm. or reflective images. That's a that's a easiest I could say. So your eye is acting like a mirror. Mm-hmm. Why I say that? Hummingbirds can see mm-hmm. ultraviolet, but we cannot see ultraviolet. We can only sense things which are sensible to our sensory perception. And uh, the reality outside could be totally different. And depending on uh, what kind of an animal you are, you see different. You perceive different realities. Mm. I'll, I'll say an example. Uh, if you are a pig, mm. and if you are a human, a puddle of mud, a uh, mud pool, would look like a five-star hotel to a pig. Yeah. But for man, it's a very uh, stinky. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, you don't like it. Mm. So depending on what uh, form you are. Mm. Reality is different, mm-hmm. so there's an innate uh, barrier with our sensory experiences. Mm-hmm. So, uh, like you said, even if you want to try to understand the reality, there's a limitation. Mm-hmm. But much more important is not trying to understand the reality. Mm-hmm. Much more important is trying to make peace with whatever the reality you have. Mm-hmm. That's the more important thing. So that's why uh, another uh, I will give you this final uh, anecdote and analogy. Uh, one uh, one day. The same question was asked, mm. and uh, then Buddha has given this fantastic answer. Mm. If you if if you are stricken with a with an arrow, mm. right? Uh, would you be more interested in uh, looking where it came, uh, who shot it, mm. or would you be more interested in removing mm. it mm. and trying to uh, mm. remedy uh, find a remedy for your immediate pain? Mm. What would you do first? Mm. So that is the exact thing Buddhism proposes. You can look for the reality. But uh, in this pursuit, while you are pursuing for the reality, there are certain limitations that you can never overcome. Like in Plato's allegory of chaos, mm-hmm. we have our natural limitations. But it's more important is how you find whatever the reality you have. Mm-hmm. Now that is the more important question. And in order to do that, you again need to venture out and start looking at a reality from a different perspective. So that is more important. And it's a very uh, arduous thing. You need a lot of stamina. You need a lot of courage. You need, you need to be really ready for a lot of uh, negative things uh, to have to face negative things. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Thero, what is death, and what dies when we die? Now that's a question I don't have a full answer for. Mm. Right? But I could say I die every day, and I wake up. Uh, I am born every morning. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and yesterday I died. Yeah. Uh, why I say that? Uh, it's a very interesting question. What makes a dead person dead and a living person living? Mm. If you look at a dead body, uh, he can't smell, mm. he can't uh, hear, listen, etc. Mm. How we know that he cannot smell or hear is because he doesn't respond. Mm. But, but you could be in a deep coma and you see this deep person yeah. and you don't respond. Mm. But uh, apart from being responsiveness, you seem to be inanimated. Mm. Right? We have this uh, conceptual. Uh, Animation in your mind, you know when when you use a phone, you say that uh, oh my phone is dead. So you sort of attach an anime animation to the mm-hmm. phone. We find these artificial intelligent bots. Mm-hmm. You can chat with them. Yeah. You know there's a robot called Sophia. Yes. Yeah, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, you know we consider him to be a real yeah. person. Mm-hmm. And even a vehicle, we say you know I love her, mm-hmm. I love him. The ships are called her. You sort of uh, attach an animation to them. Similarly, a dead person cannot be attached to an animation. He is inanimate. That's why we call him dead. And a person who is living can uh, experience things. The way, since you mentioned uh, brand management, I see four pieces in life. 
like a four piece in market on we have a living experience is associating people going to places uh, having past times and uh, having possessions so those four piece you could roughly include it possessions people places and past times right and this is the living experience and the experience of death if we deduce that is not having these four piece okay. and what is the closest to that is uh, sleeping yeah. you don't uh, yeah. sleep these four things mm-hmm. so the death in a more uh, physiological manner yeah. is you being animated your blood not working etc but if you look at what is the experience of death you do experience it sometimes that is your sleep but what I just said was wrong because you cannot experience it yeah. you don't see anybody who has experienced it and come and tell ah this is how it was okay. <laughs> you don't even experience your sleep yeah. but you experience it just before you fall asleep mm-hmm. and just after you are woken up mm-hmm. you don't experience your sleep mm-hmm. so what about dreams that comes in between you? well then you remember that you were talking about some form of an awareness yeah you know, compared to deep sleep and dream sleep, mm-hmm. dream is a form of awareness. Mm-hmm. It is not as aware as your normal, uh, uh, you know, woken up awareness, yeah. but it's another form of awareness. Yeah. But deep sleep is uh, the closest you get to a day, but you can't experience it. You can't experience You can only experience dreams or REM sleep mm-hmm. or the woken up and right before you went to sleep. Mm-hmm. That is your conscious experience. Mm-hmm. And what you don't know is the death. So that happens subconsciously or? Or oh, is it something that we can't put in words? That's very, what we say. Very good. No, uh, the, the, what the way I'm explaining this mm. is uh, there's two ways I could explain it. Yeah. One way is that I can attach all the electrodes and look at it from a more physiological manner. Yeah. You know, from a more uh, physical manner. Mm. Uh, we call it in Buddhism, vastavika or ontological. You look at, you explain the world with uh, its uh, uh, elements, compounds, the physical, materialistic uh, explanation. The other way of explaining world is through your experience, mm-hmm. epistemological. Mm-hmm. You start uh, talking about your experience only, mm-hmm. not what is really out there, mm-hmm. but you talk about your experience based on what is out there. Mm-hmm. You don't deny the existence of a physical world, mm-hmm. but you are more concerned of your metaphysics than your physics. Mm-hmm. Right? So then you talk of your experience. So in your own experience, mm-hmm. you have your living experience mm-hmm. with the focus, and then you have uh, the sleep, I'm not talking about the dream, the deep sleep, yes. which you don't have an experience, mm. but you call it sleep anyway. Mm. So not from a physical point of view, but from your own experience point of view. Mm. So uh, that is the way I explain mm. things rather than looking at it from physical point of view. Mm. From physical point of view, we know that the heartbeat uh, stops down, yeah. ECGs go down, mm. and that's your physical sleep. But from an experiential point of view, uh, what is that? And why the experiential point of view is so important? Do you have anything other than your experience? Mm. Now, that's a profound question. Yeah. You cannot have my experience. You will only have your experience. Mm. And our entire existence is about my own experience. When you say my, it's a personal experience. It's, it's a subjective existence, right? I mean, my, my existence is totally different to somebody else's. Yes. Yes. We actually cannot ever talk about uh, anyone else's existence, mm. experience. Mm. We can only vouch for oh, and we will ever only feel our okay. experience. Yeah. And that's why it's so important to start looking yeah. at the world from that point of view. Mm-hmm. From yeah. our experiential point of view. I, I, don't, I think it's a bit too... Yeah, it's, it's a bit too deep. deep. <laughs> yeah. We have a lot of philosophical topics to talk about, so then we'll take that forward to the next episode. And the final question. Thank okay, I know. Thank you so much for spending time with us. and. Um, can a person ever be content or can a person ever be happy totally? You know, okay. we, we, we let me just rephrase the question again. Now, now we are looking for you know happiness in whatever we do, even even the food, you know, the music, you know, everything what we do is looking for happiness yeah, in the end. But one thing leads to another. You know, we, we get this happiness and then we start looking for another one, and then it goes on. It's a never ending journey. So uh, even though we see a lot of you know smiley faces. You know, I see a lot of people who are crying out loudly in their heart of hearts. So can a person be really, really happy in this world? Well, if you want, you can be happy. Mm. But having said that, it's not the base and means that uh, most of people know already. Mm. Now I say that mm. happiness can never be contained. Mm. It has this natural way of dissipating. It uh, fades away 
That's the nature of happiness. And uh, that's assuming that you get that happiness. In order to get that happiness, you need to do a lot of work. If you want to go on a trip, you need to work and you need to be salaried. In order to get that salary, you need to work the entire month. <laughs> you know, yeah. you know, lots of uh, yeah. uh, hard things. Mm -hmm. You don't like working, mm -hmm. but you like the salary and you like going on trips. Yeah. Right? So in order to get that happiness, you need to go through a lot of hardships. Somehow you get the happiness. Mm -hmm. As soon as you got the happiness, can you be happy forever? Mm -hmm. And now I'll take a very contemporary example. Uh, there's a TikTok uh, a user called Bella Poch mm -hmm. and she has the highest following right now mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Bella Poch has come up with a song mm -hmm. right? and uh, can you keep listening to this uh, song forever mm -hmm. provided that you can listen there's electricity, there's a phone, there's internet and yeah. you can listen to it unlimitedly mm -hmm. can you listen to this song forever mm -hmm. you can, there's a point of time that you start uh, getting uh, mm -hmm. sick of it and yeah. you, know, you get bored yeah. of it and it uh, automatically goes away you know, if you look at our physiological experience of uh, drug uses, yeah. you can uh, smoke something, you can drink something, mm -hmm. but you cannot sustain that kick forever. Yeah. It dissipates. Mm -hmm. So the same problem is there with happiness that we know. Mm -hmm. It's subjected to uh, forgetting the hardships that you had to endure to get there. Mm -hmm. Suppose you got there, mm -hmm. it's naturally going to fade away. So is there something called happiness at all? There is. Mm -hmm. There is. And you are very correct. So now the next question is asking if this is not what is next. Mm -hmm. And in uh, Buddha's lifetime, you will see this very important question: Kim Kusara mm -hmm. yeah. What is the merit? So you go over there, you start seeking, mm -hmm. and uh, that's how the uh, path of seeking starts. Mm -hmm. And path of seeking is spirituality. Yeah. A path of non-seeking, I would say, a religious path. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. uh, by all, with all due respect to religious people, mm -hmm. would you be satisfied with? Uh, the talent answers you have. Mm -hmm. But part of seeking and spirituality would be questioning this answer that you go. But tell you now, when you start seeking, mm -hmm. it causes you more stress, right? It causes you more stress. Yeah. 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 It so causes you more stress. Yeah. You're right. And uh, our, this is our very nature mm -hmm. that we have a thirst, a curiosity for knowledge. Mm -hmm. We cannot be simply settled with the current knowledge we have. And uh, Buddhism, if you look at uh, in the doctrine, there's this Hari Ashtakin Path, Eightfold Noble Path. So you find this uh, concept called Eightfold Noble Path mm -hmm. in Buddhism. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is sort of the highest value in the Buddhist doctrine. Mm -hmm. And uh, going back to your question, mm -hmm. is it continuous seeking gives you a headache? Mm -hmm. While it is being very right, mm -hmm. this is the human nature. And uh, Buddha is proposing, in order to kill attachment, use attachment. Now, okay. That's a very profound thing. Yeah. Right? Tanava pranayakara na tanava pranayakara. Tanava your attachment. Yeah. Use your attachment mm. against finding a solution for your attachment. Right. So you see that in the path of seeking, mm. you need to really be attached to that path. Yeah. And that conviction yeah. is all about being fully attached to it. Right? So, if you look at uh, from a balance point of view, you would say that this is wrong. Mm -hmm. But it has been acknowledged. Yeah. It is that's wrong. Practical that's the practical yeah. way. But that's the only way. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that is why in Buddhism it says even this doctrine mm -hmm. is not for you to be fully attached. Mm -hmm. Once you use it, once you use the tool, mm -hmm. just leave the tool and go away. Mm -hmm. So, it is a very important question mm -hmm. and it's a very profound uh, question. That uh, even the doctrine is not there for you to, you know, take forever. Mm -hmm. You need to let go of the doctrine also. Mm -hmm. But the only path is to be attached to the doctrine and then find the detachment through that. So yeah. you kill attachment with the attachment. Yeah. Oh well, thank you so much, Kalu uh, and Thank you so much once again for spending time with us and being on Simple Talks on Chakra TV. So don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell as well. I really hope that you enjoyed this uh, conversation and we are looking forward to having another one with you very soon. Thank you. And one final thing. Yeah. It's a very interesting concept with even the name Chakra TV. Yeah. Right. So I think hopefully we can have a discussion yeah. how to break this chakra. Yeah. So with that, uh, I uh, I think I'm going to make this point to uh, you know explain that further as so, well because a lot of people have been asking me why why do I call this Chakra TV and some people have you know told me that it's, it's a marketing trick that I use well it is not actually I know there is another channel that is very famous channel I must say 
uh, which uses the same, uh, you know, the chakra with another. I'm not going to promote that channel by the way. <laughs> so uh, I just want to call it uh, chakra tree because life is a circle. You know, we, there's no apparent end or beginning. So that was the whole reason. So I hope that cleared uh, the doubt that you had about the chakra tree as well.